up guys, this year boy, Barca boy 103, today we're going to be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past few days, we do have a lot of topics to discuss, first in regards to transfers, we have been linked with a new pivot that has not been heard about since around July, August time during the summer transfer window, and that is Florentino Luis, the pivot playing for Benfica, where Deco is a big fan of the player and he is available for a relatively affordable Price. We also have some updates on players who could be leaving the club this summer on Marcus Alonso and also Robert Lewandowski who is attracting a lot of interest from the MLS and Saturday clubs. We do have some injury and fitness updates around key players of the Barcelona squad like Christensen, De Jong, Arujo, Pedri. Some player development updates as well on Ansu Fati, on Lemen Yamal. Third kit being leaked again, different color scheme. Barcelona releasing a new video game. We'll talk about that. And finally, we do have all the rumors and news after Barcelona's terrible loss against Shakhtar on Tuesday, what the Porter's thoughts is on Xavi and the players, and what the plan is from Xavi and his coaching staff to reverse the situation. But before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button down below. Let's try to get to 200 likes in this video. Be very much appreciated. Also, if you're new, make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already, and let's get into it. Now before we get into this video, this video is sponsored by Number One Foot. Number One Foot is one of the best replica football jersey websites on the market right now. They have a variety of different items at absolutely fantastic prices. For me here today, I'm going to show you guys the training kit from this season. This is the warm-up kit that, that the players use when they go out for training every single day, pre-games as well. You have here the Spotify logo, they have the club badge on it with the diamond as well. And I also have here one of the sweaters they have from last season. This was the Catalonia version. It feels like I bought this from the Nike store directly. The quality is absolutely unreal. The printing is fantastic. And of course, mainly the prices are unbeatable. And if you use the discount code BOY at checkout, you do get an additional 15% off your final order that is b-o-y use it at checkout you get 15 percent off your order and all orders above 80 dollars as well will guarantee you free shipping so what are you waiting for click the top link in the description down below and get your new football kits today Let's start off with the transfer news over the past few days now the first player we have been linked with is in a position that Barcelona I cannot express how desperately we need to reinforce this position it is of course the pivot and we have been linked with a new name over the past few months we have been linked with him heavily in the summer and that is Florentino Luis the pivot that plays for Benfica. Tony Juan Marti has come out saying that Florentino Luis of Benfica is still on Barcelona's radar as they continue to search for a long term pivot. He has a 120 million euro release clause but Barcelona believe they can negotiate a fee of around 40 million euros. His contract does end with Benfica in 2027. I'll be honest I've reached a point with this pivot where I just want someone to come in. I will take anyone that has somewhat of a long-term goal and looks decent and promising coming into it. I've seen some clips of Florentino Luis. We were linked with him. I remember back in the summer when it was him and uh, Juan Poinia for uh, Fulham. They were the two that were rumored to come in after Romeo. All Barcelona looking for a long-term one, the Portuguese duo. So we've been linked with him before. I've seen his clips. Again, looks all right, but it all depends on how he adapts to the system of Barcelona, the stature as well, the environment, the atmosphere, all that stuff. For 40 million euros, again, the way I see it is that you're only 20 million euros from Zubimendi. We're at a point now where 60 million for Zubimendi is looking like a fantastic deal because if he's available for 30, 20, I'm thinking, okay, you can take a gamble on this, that's fine. But when you're at this point and you can sell one player to achieve that money necessary to get the best possible pivot for Barcelona, doesn't make sense for me to go for Fontino Luis for 40 million euros. And also, uh, he's 24 years old. I believe Zumendi is going to be 25, so only a year gap as well. Look, I am a Zumendi uh, enthusiast, you could say. I will hold my hands up. I just think he is so, so perfect for what we need. And when the price is this close, I'm not too convinced by this. But again, like I said before, I'm at a point now where I just want anyone. So I'll wait and see. Again, still unclear what's going to happen in the January transfer window. More specifically, what will be the priority, Victor Roque, or bringing in a short or long-term pivot. So we'll wait and see how things develop, but again, Florentino Luis is yet another name that is added to the Barcelona pivot list. Now, another position in which Barcelona are keeping a close eye on to reinforce is the winger position, and we have been linked again with Savinho or Savio from Girona, the Brazilian uh, winger, and this is coming in from Gold Brazil. They're saying that Barcelona are keeping a close eye on Savio. The City Group wants around 20 million euros for the winger, which to be honest, is a good deal, but again, it depends on What's going to happen in the winging department in the summer? What's going to be the future of Rafinha, who's looking like he's 
all over the place. Fanan with an offer come in that you will take. Ansu Fati, Joao Felix. I think the club had to sort out those things first before they keep their eyes on other targets. You can keep, you can, you can track players. That's fine. Whether it's Savio, Nico Williams, that's fine. But to make an actual concrete decision is where the question mark comes in. Again, you have Florentino Luis for 40, Savio for 20. That's the price of Zuba Mendy right there. And I'd much rather have Zuba Mendy than Savio and uh, Florentino Ruiz 100 million percent. So keep your eyes on Savio, see how he's developing so far with Canona this season. Again, it's only been about 12, 13 games, but we'll wait and see how he progresses from now until especially that middle part, January, February time, and of course, the end of the season. But Barcelona, more specifically Deco, keep me a close eye on the development of Savio. Let's now discuss the players that have been rumored to leave Barcelona over the past few days. And the first big name is RL9, Robert Lewandowski, who this season, dare I say, has been having a poor season. Of course, he has been injured for around, what was it, two, three weeks or so, but still not doing great. I believe off the top of my head, if I'm not mistaken, he has six goals this season. And when you're talking about... 15 20 games. I would expect Robert Lewandowski at this age to be having a goal a game, so I would expect him to be at least 9 10 in the double digit range at the bare minimum. He's not there yet, so again, having a poor season. There are reports coming in saying that several MLS clubs are interested in Robert Lewandowski. Now, Lewandowski has spoken in the past about his interest in joining the MLS. He mentioned how he likes LA Galaxy and all these things like that. And he also mentioned that he wants to play in America at some point, kind of doing a little Sergio Roberto 2.0. Foot Mercado came out saying that Barcelona are now looking for younger strikers than Robert Lewandowski, who is attracting interest from the MLS and also Saudi Arabia as well. Now, the younger striker can be Victor Roque and it could be someone else as well. I will say this on Robert. Now, he does have a contract until 2025, and after 2025, we have the option to extend it if both Barcelona and Lewandowski agree to those terms. We do have wage issues. He is sitting on more than 200,000 euros a week. I think it's around 250,000 euros per week, and he's not performing. And imagine removing Lewandowski, those wages as well, and implementing it into the likes of other strikers and maybe even pivots as well. I will say this on Robert. I think the club will not sell him unless they get a good offer. And for me, a good offer for Lewandowski would be around 30 million euros. He is going to be going, of course, this summer. He'll be entering the final year of his deal. 20, 30 million euros. You get half the money back that you invested for 40. By the way, Robert Lewandowski at around 45 million euros. He made, we of course made the money back from shirt sales. Keep in mind, Lewis Lewandowski will be very uh, detrimental to Barcelona as well. Marketing wise, one of the top players, of course. But... 45 million euros for Lewandowski based on the season and a bit he's had so far. I would say we, I, I would say Bayern Munich finessed us quite a bit. Unless he turns it around this year, you got one really, really good year from Lewandowski and one really, really poor year. So you could make the argument for both sides, honestly. But I think Barcelona will be looking to get at least half their investment back. For me, that'd be a good move. I would not let him go for free. I'd much rather keep him for a year until he's free and then rather than let him go for a year. But this Lewandowski you know saga is i think really heating up again not performing well clubs are being interested barcelona i think will accept an offer if it's the right offer depends who we bring in to of course uh, replace him as well this for me is a very very interesting case and this will be dragging out till at least summer of course nothing will happen in january but wait and see this summer again his wife himself are very very happy in the city of barcelona they like living here so i think it won't be that it will be, it will be difficult to you know force him out but it will be have it will be a lot of it has to be from him himself wanting to leave as well so we'll wait and see keep our eyes on situations keep our eyes on his performances how he's been doing this season but it looks like both the mls and saudi arabia could be calling Lewandowski's number this summer and barcelona could be open to a sale now a player that is pretty much 99% guaranteed to leave Barcelona this summer is Marcus Alonso, especially since his contract is expiring and he's been performing absolutely shite this season. Now there are reports coming in saying that Marcus Alonso is in talks with Atletico Madrid for a free move this summer once he leaves Barcelona. Now the reason why I bring this up, again I don't really care where Marcus Alonso goes, I don't think him going to Atletico Madrid scares me whatsoever, but I will say this. If this is true that Atletico Madrid are interested in Marcos Alonso, in January, I am calling Atletico Madrid. Take him now. Give us a little, you know, buy options for some of your players in the summer. Take him six months early. I don't even give him for free. I swear to God, I would give him for free. The fact that we save on his wages is huge. But if you could sneak a transfer fee, one or two million from Atletico Madrid, give us a couple of buy options for some players, happy days. 
I think that's very, very unlikely, especially since that Barcelona won't have Alex Valle, and they will probably have to look for a fullback option, since apart from Alonso, we have no coverage at fullback. We have our starting fullbacks in Balde and Cancelo, and that's pretty much it. You're down to Sergio Roberto, which isn't that great. So we'll wait and see. I think my theory is very, very unlikely, so... To be fair, I really don't care where Alonso goes. He goes off like a Madrid, and fair enough to him. It gives a good move. I won't be bothered whatsoever. But keep your eyes on that January option. You just never know. But again, it looks like Alonso is in talk with Atletico Madrid to join them once he leaves Barcelona. Let's now discuss some of the news surrounding Barcelona over the past few days. First, we do have an update on one of the lone players, and that is Ansu Fati and on his development at Brighton. Now, if you've noticed, Ansu Fati's been in and out of the team quite a bit. He's rarely started games for Brighton on a consistent basis as well. And, you know, the Barcelona and also Barcelona fans are not getting worried, but are questioning the fact that, you know, he's picked a good move, a good low move over the likes of Tottenham as well. I'm now starting to think that Ansu Fati at Tottenham would have been a better move because now they're desperate for wingers. They need, um, I think, Richarlison is going to be out for a while. So imagine a front three of Ansu Fati, Son, Kulateski with Mass and Fidem in behind. I think Ansu Fati at Tottenham right now would be a starter. Nonetheless, there are reports coming in saying that Ansu Fati is progressing well over at Brighton with the Zerbi having designed a specific plan for him that focuses on getting the best out of him physically, but also trying to remove the pressure from him. If Ansu Fati is not starting for Brighton week in, week out by mid-January, beginning of February, this low move would have failed beyond belief. And I hope that's not the case. I was very happy that he chose Brighton over Tottenham. I was very adamant about that. But now looking back on it, you're looking at this current situation where he's, you know, competing with the likes of Mitomo, Destari, Joao Pedro, Evan Ferguson, all these players, Pascal Gross, Soli March. And the Tottenham, the competition is barely there. I mean, at this point, he'd be a starter for them. So, we'll wait and see how it goes with Ansu Fati. Hopefully, Barton's uh, development plan is on the right track and it was best for the player. Again, his future will be very, very uh, interesting this summer. But we'll wait and see how his low move develops at Brighton. Now, the man who replaced Ansu Fati in the Barcelona squad has been Lamen Yamal. And he has been attracting a lot of interest in terms of sponsorship opportunities. Alex Pintel from Relief has come out saying that Nike, Adidas, Puma and New Balance are fighting to sponsor Lamen Yamal. His old contract with Nike has now ended. The amount of money these companies are willing to offer Lamen Yamal are at the same level of some of the world's best players. So not only is Barcelona, but also other companies are invested in Lamen Yamal. I think I, I think he's at a point in his career where he just takes the biggest bag. You know, it doesn't matter if you represent New Balance, Puma, Adidas, Nike. They might have long-term goals for him, but. I would be saying, you know what, just pick the bag at this point, pick whichever one's giving the most money. But hopefully this money doesn't get to his head too much and says that, then, you know, when he returns to do his contract with Barcelona in the future, he's going to ask for that kind of same kind of money, things of that nature. So we'll wait and see. But again, Lamen Yamal is attracting a lot of interest for sponsors and he will choose a sponsor, by the way, very soon. Let's now discuss some of the injury and also fitness updates around the first team at Barcelona. First, we have to discuss the discomfort and fitness update on Andreas Christensen. Now, this is coming in from Jody Hill from Sport. He's come out saying that Andreas Christensen has been suffering from discomfort in his Achilles tendon since the beginning of the season due to which he has not played at 100% physically and has not been able to complete many matches. He has been playing with some pain. He is working to improve physically and soon to be at 100%. So the reason why Christensen is in and out of the squad so much is because he's suffering from some discomfort. Now, again, He's been called to the Denmark nat uh, national team for international break. Uh, this is why you have to have coverage in every position because some players are not as reliable as some. Yes, Christian has been unbelievable since he's joined Barcelona, one of the best free signings we've ever done for sure. He's an absolutely crucial player for the squad. But when you're in and out of the team and not reliable, it brings up question marks. And this is why the likes of the signing of Indigo Martinez and Kundi is so important because Christensen can drop at any given point. Hopefully this recovered very well. Again, we're at a point now where we have good coverage. You have Aruho who's fit. We'll talk about Aruho actually in a few seconds. You have Kunde. You have Inigo Martinez. You don't have to so much risk Christensen so, so much week in, week out. But the way the other things develop, he has, of course, played the full 90 against Shakhtar on uh, Tuesday. So hopefully the uh, pain is slowly but surely going away. Now, speaking on the match against Shakhtar, we do have some updates on players who play in that match. Firstly is... Ronald Araujo. Now, there were reports during the game that Araujo was suffering from discomfort, then they went after the game, and the reports were increasing about some discomfort that Araujo had. Fernando Polo said that Araujo finished the match with some discomfort. It seems just to be an overload, but more tests will be done, of course, later on yesterday. Juan Marti confirms as well, and they say that he has some discomfort, but nothing too serious. And it was confirmed yesterday morning from Bahia Miguel saying that Araujo is fine. The tests have showed there is no 
injury. I think, that's I think this pretty much means that Aruho will be on the bench for Alaves. And this is the problem with Aruho. He can play. When he plays, he's just so, so crucial. I mean, the probably the best 1v1 defender in the world right now, but he's unreliable. He cannot play in my opinion, four or five matches in a row. He should be playing two matches, one rest, two matches, one rest to keep him available because the best form of being a top class player is being available to play. So I think the club really have to be cautious on playing Aruho in so many consecutive matches, but he's all right now and hopefully that will be the case going forward. Now, a player who came on in the match against Jack Taylor next was, of course, Pedri, who just came back from an injury. Now, there are reports about him being called up for the Spanish national team during the international break. Apparently, Barcelona don't want him to go, but Spain do want him. Having Miguel from AS came out saying that Pedri is obsessed with returning to the national team, so Pedri does want to go with Spain. In Barcelona, they don't want Pedri to join the national team, and they prefer him to stay in Barcelona. Again, only had, what, 25 minutes against... Uh, Sociedad and then half an hour against Shakhtar, uh, Xavi and De La Fuente will agree on the decision soon. So they might just say, okay, you come up for two games, play him in one and that's it. Whatever the case may be. I would prefer that Pedri stay back. We have crucial and I mean season defining crucial matches after the international break, which Pedri needs to be 1 trillion percent ready for. If he goes to Spain, and gets injured, I am taking that gun that I see right there in the corner and putting it in my mouth. We are at a point now where we don't want any injuries, we want to be a thousand percent ready to go. So again, we'll wait and see what happens with this and what the decision will be. And we heard that from Min Lopez will be called up to the national team as well, so congrats to him. But that's the case with Pedri. Final update is on Frankie De Jong. Now, having Miguel from AS came out saying that Frankie De Jong is practically ruled out for this weekend's match against Alaves. The sanctions in his injury are not fully positive despite training and uh, trying infiltration. So apparently he was given medicine to try to be fit for the classical, but that still wasn't enough. His return is expected to be after the international break. Now, Frankie De Jong not playing this Sunday against Alaves is not only because of his injury, but also because of the birth of his first child. Fernando Polo from Deportivo came out saying that Frankie De Jong and his partner, Mickey, are expecting their first child this weekend and has informed the club and the dressing room about this. Barcelona hoped that he would have been in the squad list for Alaves this weekend, but now it is doubtful and his recovery could also be slowed down if he has to give more time to his partner now. If he does not play for Barcelona this weekend, he is not expected to be called up for the Netherlands game during the international break either. I think this is the correct decision. You know, family first. You can, only, you can play so many matches. You'll play 500, 600 matches in your, in your life. You can only have a couple of child. You know, that's reality. Or being there for their birth. Of course, you can be on a matter when I have 20, 30 kids, but you're still going to be having less kids than you are playing football matches. So I understand this completely. Uh, he's not even fit anyways. If he was called up for Shakhtar, I would personally be a bit, a bit disappointed that he doesn't get any minutes against Alaves, but I understand the situation 100%. So it looks like Frankie De Jong, not only is he not quite fit yet, he also is going to become a father this weekend as well. So congrats to him. Hope he's a fully uh, uh, healthy baby, good birth as well. Then after international break, when we have those crucial season-defining games, Frankie De Jong will be there 100%, fully fit, and ready to go. Now on to some more general news around Barcelona, we do have some updates on the third kit for next season being lead again the home kit and the away kit is pretty much confirmed from the lease, we saw the black kit for the second uh, kit and the home kit is going to be uh, three stripes with the, the club and the uh, sponsorship in the middle, the club badge should I say, but on the third kit the color scheme has always been flopping and changing, on the right hand side where you see Cancelo, this is the kit that I told you guys about I think like a month or two ago, it's going to be you know dark blue with the navy uh, kind of texture on the badge and the uh, sponsor, but but apparently according to footy headlines now it's actually going to be the other way around where the kit's going to be kind of a teal color and it's going to be a navy blue for the nike and the uh barcelona logo as well let me know between the two which one you prefer um i kind of prefer the one on the right is a bit more darker we've had a lot of light kits recently we had the pro kit of course uh, a few years ago this season we had the teal kit so this one kind of you know kind of the same same wavelength as a teal kit in my opinion so i do prefer the the one that cancel is wearing but they both could, li could look kind of meaty to me i'm not really gas about it i think they're both kind of you know mid six seven out of ten kits but let me know in the comments down below what you think now staying on the topic of kits the top selling kits have been released for the world of football i think barcelona ranked uh, in the top 10 but also the players inside of barcelona who sell the most names on the back of the shirt have been revealed and it is as follows the most selling shirt at barcelona with the name on the back is robert lewandowski and this is why his sale brings up that big question mark second place is gavi third place is pedri Fourth is Putellas, and fifth is Aitana. So we have two women's players in the top five, which is very interesting. Shows how strongly the women's game is growing. But the fact that Lewandowski, Gabi, and Pedri are the top three for selling kits for Barcelona does not surprise me 
in the slightest. I think there's no one that can piece with these three players in regards to the marketing scheme, in regards to uh, who the fans love the most because they give the passion on the pitch and also big names as well. I would expect in the future that Frankie de Jong and Aruha would creep into that top five at some point, but for now, I'm not surprised whatsoever. Um, the fact that Boteas and uh, Aitana are competing with sales in regards to the men's team shows again how strong the women's game is as well. So in that regards, you know, talking to Lewandowski quickly about his sale, imagine you lose Lewandowski, you're gonna lose so much in terms of marketing, in terms of the kids' sales as well, because he's carrying the kids' sales because of course he has those Polish fans who just love the players. So that's something really, really important you're gonna miss out on if we do end up selling him this summer. But nonetheless, Kit Seals, of course, have been very good for Barcelona uh, right lately, but Nike be slacking, not supplying the kits, and hopefully next season we will have the same success in regards to selling kits. Now into some more crazy news in regards to Barcelona becoming the first ever club to release a video game. Now this broke from Victor Navarro from Cope a few days ago. He came out saying that on Wednesday, which of course was yesterday, President Laporta will put on the starting point for the world's first ever game platform created by a sports club. It will be at the Barcelona Games. It will be presented at the temporary museum at the Spotify Camp Nou. And of course, yesterday was Wednesday and the presentation did take place where the Barca game app will be released around April 2024. It will have chat GBT functions that measure the steps you walk, run, and adds you in the world ranking. You can play bowling, chess, order food online, and listen to Spotify. So it's kind of essentially a whole entire remake of the Barcelona app, which to be honest, looks absolutely brilliant. I don't know if it's going to be available or working worldwide, but this would be very, very sick. I think they will make, I think this, they're saying that there's gonna be some free version and some paid version of this app as well. But again, Laporte taking these steps to put Barcelona more on the global market and of course, increase that income. Now, in my opinion, one of the biggest low-key reports around Barcelona over recent days has been the talks in regards to the future of our sport, former sporting director, Mateu Aleman. Now, Gerard Romero has leaked some information saying that Mateo Aleman is considering joining Atletico Madrid. He's already met with the club, although nothing has been finalized yet. You can see a picture here on the right-hand side, him meeting with the uh, Atletico Madrid board. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this is keep in mind, we do a lot of business with Atletico Madrid, of course. Joao Felix. So the fact that if Mateo Eleman is a point, and of course Atletico are interested in Marcos Alonso, if Mateo Eleman is a sport is appointing the sporting director of Atletico Madrid, we will Deco will be negotiating with Eleman to keep Joao Felix. Now this you can see this going two ways. He's either going to be really really nice to us, bless us, or try and find the best results for both parties, or he's absolutely going to finesse us. So it's either going to be going two ways. It would be a very very interesting story. I personally hope. It does not happen because I don't need this extra drama in my life. But Matteo Lehmann joining Atletico Madrid will be wild in terms of transfer negotiations between Barcelona and Atletico Madrid. Of course, there's been a lot over recent uh, years. We currently have an Atletico Madrid player. We have a player that Atletico Madrid are in talks to sign next season as well. So it would be crazy. So keep your eyes on Matteo Lehmann deciding his future where he could join our direct rival in Atletico Madrid. Now the final topic that I want to discuss before I end off this video is in regards to the reports and also post Shakhtar the next match on the pressure that's building on Xavi and also the players. There's been a lot of reports coming out about the atmosphere and the feeling around Xavi, the player situation, what Laporta thinks as well. So we're going to get right into it. We're going to fill you guys in on all the details. Now first this is coming in from Sport, more specifically from Ferran Corras and also Jody Hill. So this is all coming in from reliable or somewhat well-known journalists. They've come out saying this, there are players in the team who believe that this international break comes in an ideal time for the team to address its mistake. Another message from the locker room is they understand that the current situation is not positive. They understand that there is a problem with the team's performances and it needs to be addressed. There is self-criticism from the players. They all realize that there is need for a factory reset. The whole team admits they've been emotionally affected after last week and the past few days have been difficult. Despite everything at Barcelona, some see that there is only two points difference from Real Madrid and La Liga and they are leading their Champions League group. Joan Laporta maintains complete confidence in Xavi. Both sporting department and club management believe that Xavi will turn the current situation around the coaches that believe the classical defeat has damaged the confidence of the players. They are losing promise with the ball and defensively the fact of not being able to dominate the rivals is being noticed. Xavi is going to make uh, measures to address the current situation but it must be the players who take the step forward because they have been shown that they can play at a high level. 
Last year, Xavi discovered the form formula with four midfield, which Barcelona won the league convincingly with the system. The coach has his assistants that will work during the upcoming international break to find a new formula that changes the dynamics of the team. The technical staff will also think about whether Barcelona should be continuing to defend with two center defenders or should they play with a back three so that not only can seeing so many clear opportunities at goal, find the best way to utilize Cancelo and Bali together is also one of the tasks for the technical staff that they will be looking at during the international break and also the technical staff believe that the team has to attack and defend better than what they are doing now. So this report kind of states the obvious but it kind of gives us a little bit of information that Chabby and the staff will look at different formulas, different tactics during the international break to get the best out of their players. They might switch to a back three to kind of change things up a bit. Again, Laporta fully packs Chabby and he will not be sacking him at all. I think attacking Chavi mid-season will be detrimental. I think it'll be the wrong decision right now. There's no one really to come in and it would just flip the whole entire dynamic. But at the end of the season, based on what happens, what you win and stuff, that's where the question mark comes in. Now, Tony Juan Martins come out saying that Barcelona squad highlights that the general situation is better than what it is after the uh, after the last three uh, matches. They understand the feeling today are not positive, but they believe that in general, the picture of reality is less dramatic. The slump in the game is evident and must be uh, redeemed, but they believe that they are not losing anything and are more alive than last year at this point. To be honest, that is not a, an incorrect statement, but in the past three games, so three games is about 270 minutes if you look at the past three games in the past 210 minutes we have been absolutely shite it's 90 against Shakhtar 90 against Sociedad and then the last half an hour against Madrid were absolutely diabolical so something has to be alarm bells you know should be ringing at this point. Now, Fernando Polo of Mundo came out saying that within the club, there is concern about the team's progression, but the confidence in the coaching staff remains intact, and there is confidence that the recovery of Frankie de Jong will improve the team's general performance. I will say this. If we had Frankie de Jong, it's not like we're going to beat Shakhtar and beat Sociedad and beat Madrid. I don't think Frankie de Jong's inclusion is going to be that dramatic. Would we perform better? I think that's a question mark. Would the team be better in some areas? Yes, but... You can't just simply hold it on Frankie de Young. Of course, when we had about six or seven starting players out, then yes, that argument is completely valid and fair. But on one player, when we have good squad depth, I don't think that's really the strongest case. Of course, no one hides that the convincing victory against Alaves is more than necessary before the international break, and that a bad result against the Basca would increase the pressure from the environment on Xavi, his staff, and the squad. Fernando Polo also said that uh, Laporta called Xavi and gave him full confidence, full uh, backing. Laporta will not sack Xavi during the season. At the end of the season, he will evaluate what Xavi's done, what he's won, and make a decision from there. But Xavi would have to lose probably, I think, six, seven games in a row and play like shite to get sacked midseason. I think other than that, he will survive this season. At the end of the season, things can change as well. Now, following the match against Shakhtar, according to Javi Mingo from AES, Xavi and the squad had a meeting for almost half an hour in the dressing room yesterday, seeking an immediate reaction. From the dressing room, they say it was a very positive meeting where the players raised their uh, vocals and gave their points. Keep in mind, we saw this a lot in the documentary last season as well. I think it was after... Was it after Bayern or Inter where the Xavi had a meeting? He brought in um, Juan Carlos Untue. So a very similar situation that's happened. Uh, Ter Stegen, Aruha, Lewandowski, and Gunduan were especially active and acted as the spokespersons for the others too. So you can see these are the leaders in the dressing room. Xavi gave a long speech and then wanted to know the opinion of his players and asked them to express themselves openly. Whether this actually happened or not remains to be seen because this sounds very similar to what happened last season. But of course, Javi Miguel is very close to Chavi and knows the things that happened behind a closed door. Both the coaching staff and the players came to the conclusion that this run of four must end as soon as possible. They have not lost anything yet, but they cannot repeat the image they have given in the last two games. The situation is reversible and against Alaves, they will have to have a good chance to recover the good feelings. To get good feelings back, we're going to have to play well and beat Alaves like 3 or 4 nil. I think if you get a scrappy win against Alaves, I think the alarm bells will still be ringing. Um, I think if you dominate and... If we draw points against Alaves, oh... Before the international break, then you have to wait two weeks for Barcelona to play again, oh... They're on ropes. They are on ropes. If you look at Barcelona's games after international break, it's Vallecano away, Porto, Champions League at home, crucial... Girona Atletico Madrid at home. Girona Atletico Madrid. That's that's first and fourth in the in the uh, in La Liga. Monumental season-defining moments after the international break, where you can secure Champions League qualification and also get back in an effing title race as well. Huge. And if you drop points against Alaves, madre mia, I might fly to Spain myself 
and hold a meeting myself with these players because the fact of the matter is this this squad is unbelievably good yes there are you could argue one or two holes definitely but this squad is more than capable enough to compete in the champions league and of course compete for the la liga title there were also reports saying that some uh some of the board members went down to the dressing room after the game and were complaining to the players that oh you want us to give you contract renewals but you can't even earn us money to give you guys more money because of course barcelona losing the Shakhtar earned a big fat zero euros from that match if you draw a match in the champions league i think you get like nine hundred thousand. But if you win the game, you get 2.8 million. And the, the board members went to the players and said, Yo, you want to give us, you guys are asking us for more money, but you can't even earn us 3 million by winning the game. So if that's true, phew, bloody hell. But again, everyone backs the players behind the scenes, of course, board and everything like that. They back Chavi as well. Chavi is not in risk of getting any, uh, of getting sacked whatsoever. But again, I must reiterate the pressure is building and the games that are coming up are absolutely season defining. And Barcelona need to get the results while also performing well. So that was my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past few days. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and of course leave your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed. The main thing I want to first say, of course, is the thoughts on Florentino Lloris coming in as a pivot option. Would you go for him for around 40 million euros or would you pull a Barca boy and save, get 20 million extra, <laughs> go for Supermendi? Second, your thoughts on the sale of Lewandowski. Would you let him go for free this summer just to save on his wages? Would you ask for a transfer fee? Would you even let him go this summer? And finally, your thoughts on the pressure building on Chavi and the players and do you think they will come out of this unscathed and of course make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already and I'll see you guys next time on the channel take care and force a Barca, 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 Barca.